Good evening, everyone. Today I'm going to tell you how to operate a cassette recorder. So as you can see, we have a Sony TC one thousand model. It's a fairly vintage model, I would say. So it's not until the late ninety seventy to be specific is ninety seventy nine that Sony announced its first Walkman. Is the TPS L two, which you can be, which can be seen in the Guardians of Galaxy movie, the first one and the second one. Um, I believe the latest one they changed the the Walkman to the Microsoft MP three player, but still, the TPS L two is a uh, fairly iconic and highly collectible items for Walkman collectors and vintage lovers. But today we're going to talk about how the basic a tape recorder work. So as you can see, we have the recorder here, and they let's talk about the parts first. So we just call this the the face, the front side, and we have the back side. So stuff on the front side, stuff on the front side, and you can tell. There's a huge compartment where it can be open. It can it has a latch like a door latch, can be open and close, and it's manually. And you can see there's the tape loading contraption here. So you just take out your tape and insert it here. But you have to look out for the for this. This thing it has a spring-loaded thing inside, which give the tape a proper pressure, so it can be more stay against the head. So when you put in the cassette, you have to watch out. This has certain angle. You cannot just like shove it in. So tilt it and push it in, and that it sit well like this. No wobble. You can tell the two the two gear is perfectly set. With the teeth of the cassette, and you close the lead. And by the way, to talk about, it's a visual hint to tell whether your cassette is ready to be is ready to be recorded or not. You can see on the top of the cassette, it has this thing. It's called the protection tab. So once the recording is done, if you don't want your recording being re-recorded. You can simply just use some something sharp and hard just to put down the protection tab. So, as you can see, this is actually right here the silver thing. When the protection tab is still is still here, that means this cassette is recordable, or you can say re-recordable. So you can see the action here. When I push it down, it actually. Push this lever in. So, when I press the recording button, is pressable. So, let's do it. Normally,、oh, we have to talk about the side, right? Which is the all the buttons, buttons located. So, it's fairly into intuitive to see those controls here. We got the review, which is to rewind. N F F means fast forward, or Q means to play slightly, not just slightly, as play like two times faster than the normal playback. So you can actually Q in or like scan through the recordings you want to hear and release it. So the fast forward button actually got two stages, but you cannot see here. You have to feel it yourself. So. Let's do the recording test. Normally, for the test for for cassette recorders or tape recorders, the record button has to be depressed with the play button. So if you just plus play, it will just plays. But when you want to record some new materials, you have to press it together. Sometimes you take a technique like this together. So now you can see the tape is spinning. It start to recording some new materials. So while we talking, 
let's take a look of the other side, which is the microphone and the volume and the volume adjustment side. So on the top on the top back top top left corner here, you can see the recording and battery indicator, sort of like a miniature of a VU meter. So as I'm talking, you can see the needle here is moving back and forth. It's just a really simple way to show that you're actually recording something because I'm highly doubt that um, people will just look at this such tiny bitty VU meter while recording stuff. And here, obviously, you can tell there's a protection grill on that as a microphone microphone located. And normally for the, let's say the Sony TCM or TCS, it's meant for tape recording. We will have this like a uh, pause button, but here we have a switch. It's a start and stop switch. So now you can tell there's an orange indicator here. That means it's recording. So when I push it here, the microphone still pick up sounds, but the tape stopped. So it's not recording. But if I push it back, the tape is going again. So it's like a pause button. And we can, for this specific model, we have a sort of like a built-in equalizer. It can be switched between speech and music. I think it just basically adjusts the in the microphone's sensitivity. For music, the microphone isn't pick up as much as volume as speech. So it's a, some function you can play with. And last but not least, normally for the for the machine meant to recording sounds, whether it's music or just voice recording, we will have this. We will have the counter. So as you can see, as we while we're recording, the counter is gradually moving forward. The counter is actually pretty convenient because when you want to review, you want to you want to rewind what what you have recorded. So you can tell there's nothing you can tell by looking at the cassette because it's hard to tell even with this small indicator thing sometimes really hard to tell especially you just want to look in specific sentence or some segments so the counter can actually be be recorded and actually be documented while we're recording uh, for me i seldom do that uh, unless it's something important i need to be precisely located but for normally for recording music on the cassette deck, I won't document the I won't document the counter thing, the counter numbers. But it's really a handy feature when it comes to voice recordings. And if we put in if we flip it to the other side, we can tell there's a MIC for microphone remote. Uh, here's some interesting things. I don't know uh, how many of you guys have seen a microphone. It's not just equipped with a 3.5 millimeter jack. They also have a smaller 2.5 millimeter jack. That's for the remote to function. So some recorders like the the generous model, the Sony TCN 5000. The recording setting is actually manual, auto, and VOR. For uh, VOR is like the short is a turn for the voice operated recording, but for the auto thing, it actually operate by the microphone. Once the microphone is set to the switch is set to on, the recording just automatically engaged. Once the microphone is off, the record is temporary. The recording is temporarily stopped. So the remote function is, yeah. But you have to have those microphones. But for me, I don't have that, so I can test on this device. And monitor, monitor is where you put in your headphones, and the DC, the DC converter with the DC current, the adapter should be put in. But one important thing to remind you when you deal with such delicate and 
old school machine is you have to watch the positive and negative tip of your adapters. I know most of people pay attention to the votes, but sometimes it's the is whether it's negative or positive that matters. Like the very interesting machine is a Sony Dix C. I got one of them, and when it shipped to my home, the CX two thousand two hundred A four I C is completely blown up because the previous owner accidentally putting the wrong adapter. So you can tell. What can I say? You plug in a wall outlet power to a small devices. So whether it's six volts, eight volts, three volts, or not, you have to watch out. And looking to the positive and negative tips, and finally we have the like the easiest part of this machine. It just the logo, the names, and the speaker. And for the battery compartment, it has to be pushed and take it out. It use four double eights to juice up the six volts. Because one point five plus one point five is three volts. Three plus three, six volts, and it provides about two and a half hour of recordings. If you use alkaline battery, can sustain like three point five hours. Not that bad. Not that bad, I would say, for such a device which has been here for nearly what, for nearly half a century. It still runs perfect. Still recording good quality sounds. So now let's hear the examples. So, when you stop recording, you plus press stop button, and look into a counter and press review. So now, sorry, I keep saying review, but it's actually rewind. So now you can tell oh the cassette is rewind to the point that where you start the recordings, and now you can listen to it just. Be recorded and actually be documented while we recording.、Uh, for me, I seldom do that、uh, unless it's something important. I need to be precisely located. But、uh, for normally for recording music on the cassette deck. So here's today's reviewing and introduction of how you should record a cassette on a. Portable cassette recorders, and in the future I might talk about how you should recording blank cassette on a cassette decks. So see you next time.